The knee joint is the largest joint of the body. It is also known as the tibiofemoral joint. It is formed by three bones, the femur, the tibia, and patella. All three bones meet and move against each other at the joint to provide necessary functionality. The bottom of the femur is articulated with the top of the tibia. The patella, which is also known as kneecap, glides along a groove located at the distal end of the femur anteriorly. The joint, therefore, is essentially consists of three articulations. The medial tibiofemoral joint and the lateral tibiofemoral joint are located between the medial and lateral condyles of the femur and the medial and lateral condyles of the tibia. The femoral patellar joint is between the patella and the distal femur. All of these articulations are enclosed within a single articular capsule. The knee functions as a hinge joint and is responsible for flexion and extension of the leg. The action is accomplished by rolling and gliding motions of the femur on the tibia. In addition, some rotation of the leg is made possible when the knee is flexed, but not when it is extended. The knee is very well designed for weight-bearing in extended position and provides excellent support during walking and running, adding to the mobility capabilities of human beings. At the femoral patellar joint, the patella slides vertically within a groove on the distal femur. Patella is a sesamoid bone and is located within the tendon of the quadriceps femoris muscle, which is the large muscle of the anterior thigh. The patella serves to protect the quadriceps tendon from friction against the distal femur. Continuing from the patella to the anterior tibia, just below the knee, is the patellar ligament. Acting via the patella and the patellar ligament, the quadriceps femoris is a powerful muscle that acts to extend the leg at the knee. It also provides support and stabilization for the knee joint. The medial and lateral tibiofemoral joints are the articulations between the rounded condyles of the femur and the grooved condyles of the tibia. The knee is brilliantly designed by nature to carry out the functions it is designed for. During flexion and extension, the condyles of the femur both roll and glide over the surfaces of the tibia. The rolling action produces flexion or extension, while the gliding action keeps the femoral condyles scented over the tibial condyles, thus ensuring maximal bony weight-bearing support for the femur in all knee positions. As the knee comes into full extension, the femur undergoes a slight medial rotation in relation to tibia. The rotation results because the lateral condyle of the femur is slightly smaller than the medial condyle. Thus, the lateral condyle finishes its rolling motion first, followed by the medial condyle. The resulting small medial rotation of the femur locks the knee into its fully extended and most stable position. Flexion of the knee is initiated by a slight lateral rotation of the femur on the tibia, which unlocks the knee. This lateral rotation motion is produced by the popliteus muscle of the posterior leg. There are two C-shaped fibrocartilages located between the articulating surfaces of the femur and tibia, medially and laterally, the medial meniscus and the lateral meniscus. The medial meniscus is located between the medial condyle of the femur and the medial condyle of the tibia. The lateral meniscus is located between the lateral condyle of the femur and the lateral condyle of the tibia. Each meniscus is thin along its inner margins and thick along the outer margins. They are attached to tibia condyles, but do not attach to the femur. The menisci provide padding between the bones and work as cushions to help fill the gap between the round femoral condyles and the flattened tibial condyles. Some areas of each meniscus lack an arterial blood supply, and thus these areas heal poorly if damaged.